Good morning. Good morning. It is day 21 since we have left Lisbon, or at least day 21 of walking and biking. And we are leaving Pontevedra today and heading about 22 kilometers to Caldas de Rai, known for their hot springs. So yeah. we're excited to hopefully get to dip our feet in some stinky sulfurous <laughs> hot spring water today. Hopefully it won't be too hot because it's going to be 90 degrees today. This I think might be our hottest day. We should have started a little earlier. We didn't start until 8.30. Yeah, we slept in a little bit. Yeah, we, um, but we're hoping to walk the whole thing. I mean, we'll see. We've only got uh, today and two more days to Santiago. We're working on, so our original plan was after we got to Santiago, have three rest days for the feast day celebrations and then walk to Mexia, walk to Finisterre and walk back. So we made some adjustments to that, which you'll hear about in that video series. Um, but we're hoping to still press on. I mean, you know, it's the Camino, it's our holiday and we don't have much time left. We are running out of time. How sad. But it's so, beautiful right um, now. In Ponte Vedra, there was a train station, and in Caldas de Rai, there's not. So that's why, in part, we're talking about walking the whole thing today. There are a couple of villages at 9 kilometers and 11 kilometers, and we're kind of thinking that if uh, Michelle's foot's hurting, we'll just find a taxi. We've never had a problem with that in the past. We're going to get at least halfway, which would be the 11 kilometers. Because I'm thoroughly as, stubborn. As we said yesterday, we're walking half days. So yeah. our goal is to hit that 11 kilometer mark, that village, and uh, call a taxi, or if she's feeling okay, she but it's doing well, we'll keep walking. Yeah, but it's a beautiful day. As you can see in the scenery around us, it's quiet. We're walking on a nice, easy gravel path, and the sun is shining, and it's beautiful. Leaving Ponte Vedra, we had a little detour. The bridge, um, one of the bridges leaving town, the one the Camino goes on, is having a uh, facelift given to it. So we had to detour down maybe two tenths of a kilometer to another bridge Which, and then backtrack just a little bit. As you can see on the video, it's a super cool bridge. The bridge we crossed was cool. Yeah, very cool. And like Michelle said, we're kind of on a bike path, walking path right now. It's a beautiful Camino. Bom Camino. Bom Camino. Bon Camino. Bon Camino. stopped at this little bar. Absolutely fantastic. The food was good. They speak very good English. A little gift shop inside. A few items that they're selling. And uh, I highly recommend it. Hey Michelle, what's that? That is a marker that tells us we are 50.150 kilometers from Santiago. That would be 50 kilometers and 500, five, 150 meters. meters. 50 kilometers, 150 meters. But what are we walking through right now? We are walking through a vineyard. Let's see. Oh, here we go. There's baby grapes. There's, There's baby grapes. Or baby, as we like to call it, baby, baby wine. Baby wine. There's baby wine. There's baby wine all over. So uh, it is hot. It oh is, my gosh, it is hot. It is 90 degrees plus. It's about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. We've walked 16 kilometers. I have, my foot is starting to give me a little bit of problem, but not so bad. But I have put on a pair of shorts 
Woo, show us those legs. Shorts that I have not, I have not been this hot yet this entire summer. This is the first time Michelle has had on shorts outside of when yeah. she was in the pool. I mean, I've had on capri leggings, but they're thick and they haven't bothered me until today. Today, I found a bathroom and I changed and it has helped so much. Um, but we've had a lot of shade. So, I mean, there are moments that aren't too bad, but holy cow, it's hot. It's hot. We have about six kilometers to go. I think our place has air conditioning. I hope it has air conditioning. Now, if tell not, us. we have discovered last night a new love of gin and tonic. We have. It's very and, refreshing. Uh, they make it so much better over here. Well, first of all, everybody drinks gin and tonic over here. So we've been here for six weeks. Five, six weeks. Yeah, six weeks. And it last was... night, I was like, I'll have a gin and tonic because oh, fell Don't off fall, the trail. <laughs> Don't fall. <laughs> Looks like I've had a gin and tonic now. You have not. Um, um, so last ahead. night I said, I'll have a gin and tonic. Cause he's like, oh, I'll try and have what the locals have. And I'm like, I'll just have my uh, Tito de Casa, which is house red wine. At a dollar 80 for a glass. Yeah. And uh, she took a taste of my gin and tonic. <laughs> and uh, we both had several more gin and tonic. I finished my wine rather quickly because it was, his gin and tonic was so refreshing. Uh, the tonic water has a little bit of lime in it. Um, it's a brand that we see in the States. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Schweppes. Yeah. But, and what was the gin? Uh, Seagram's. <laughs> like it wasn't even, but I think it was just ice cold. It had lime flavor. It had a lemon in it. And it was refreshing. You know, when you have the water here in the bladder all day, it's good to drink, but it gets very warm. So it's nice to have something refreshing. If you follow our blog, you know that Brian is very good at coming up with cocktails that we like to call cocktails with the Coleman's. And we've created several new ones that when we get home, we will uh, start uh, posting series. about. Because we've been inspired by several things that we've had here along the way in Portugal and in Spain. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting series. We've been inspired by food, so we've got lots of recipes coming up. There probably won't be a recipe of the month at the beginning of August because we'll have just gotten home. And we've got to first get ready to go back to school. And so the things will have to slow down a little bit. If you've been following, again, you've heard my foot problems. I have surgery on my foot at the end of the month. So Actually, when this video posts, you'll probably be in recovery. Uh, yuck. I'm not ready for it, but I'm so ready to not have foot pain anymore. Anybody who's had a chronic pain, you know, you know when it's time for it to be done. <laughs> So, so uh, I think we're going to turn the video off now for a second, but uh, thanks for getting us through this hot, dry spell for a few minutes by distracting us. Hasta luego. We'll see you uh, with a cold drink next time. Ciao. So, I think we have about 4K left to go. We did find a beverage, quite refreshing. Um, gin and tonic, as we were just talking about. Not as good as the last one. The gin is a beef eater gin, gin. And the tonic is the same water, but it doesn't have the lime in it. And the lime makes all the difference. However, we also got a little snack, some I don't know. Gumdrops. Gumdrops. That's what they are. With, <laughs> this is the most interesting uh, little snack we have, but I'm not complaining because I am hot and I'm hot. Everything hurts. Everything. And I'm ready for some air conditioning. But for now, I'll enjoy. Cheers. All right. So we had our refreshing drink. And, Actually, uh, what was more refreshing was the shade, the shade and yeah. putting my feet up for like 20 minutes, which there was, was amazing. But we want to talk a little bit about money right now. So we budget 60 euros a day for food. For the total, for the both of us. Two people, 60 euros, so 30 euro a piece per day we budget for food. 
Now, if you haven't heard us talk about this before, um, we kind of practice intermittent fasting, although on the Camino, that's so when you're walking a little loose, 25 to 30 kilometers a day, you need the calories. Yeah, but, it's a little bit different, but, but we our, don't eat breakfast. Our intermittent fasting means that we try to get about eight to 10 kilometers in before we stop. So for instance, today we started walking about 8.30 a.m. We stopped at 11 a.m. and had lunch, breakfast, whatever you want to call it. It was lunch. We had lunch food. Um, but that was the first food we had had to eat all day. And the first drinks we had had other than just water while we were walking. That today, um, we stopped at the first place we came to. In... Was, there was a village that had two um, stops. So there's been very few stops today. So that village was about eight kilometers into our walk. We have a car coming here. So, so um, again, the village we stopped in was about eight kilometers in. It had two cafes. We stopped at the first cafe. Now, there's an interesting problem here. Many villages you get to, there's only one cafe. So if you don't stop at the first cafe, you've missed the only stop there is. And nobody wants to walk backwards on the Camino because you've realized after walking, you know, a couple hundred meters that there's no place else to go and then you have to backtrack. And that's true on the Camino Portuguese. On the Camino Francis, oftentimes there's one, more than one bar, but not always. You just don't know. And so the first bar is the easiest to stop at because you've seen it and you don't know what's ahead. The guidebooks don't say necessarily how many bars and cafes are there. So you stop when you see something. Now the problem with the first cafe or the first bar you stop at, it's also because it's the first one, often the most, <laughs> it's often the most expensive one. So today our lunch stop, Michelle had a bocadillo I had uh, empanada. And we both had Aquarius and we got a bag of chips to share. And that was 13 euro and 50, 13.50, um, which was pricey. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Many times that same meal would have cost us less than 10. So that was an expensive meal for what we got, but it was the first stop in town. There was another stop, maybe 50, 100 meters down but because it was kind of around the corner, we couldn't see it, so we didn't know that it was there. That second cafe, not quite as nice looking. Not as many seats. Had as a quarter of the number of pilgrims at it stopped. But I bet you their prices were a little more reasonable. And we know this because we have stopped at, we try not to always stop at the first cafe. If Especially we see if we more. know that there's more. Yeah, if we can see more, because one, we're looking for a good menu, and two, we know about the prices. Now, our second stop today was really just because we needed a bathroom and we needed to get out of the sun. Yeah. So we made a stop at a small bar, and uh, it was the only place around at the time. There was no, there were no other options. And it was a very nice looking bar. We got, uh, I got a Diet Coke or Coke Zero, and Michelle I got, got an Aquarius, Aquarius. And, and then, then we, we decided we were still thirsty, so I got a second Diet Coke. And I got an ice cold water with ice cubes and lemon and refreshing. And then uh, that bar did give us some tapas, so uh, those are at, provided at no cost. The tapas were like a little mix of nuts and corn nuts and things like that. And then also a piece of bread with like three little slices of salami on it. And there were two of those. So those were at no charge. That stop cost us uh, just shy of 10 euro for basically four drinks, a water, an Aquarius and two sodas. Also very pricey because oftentimes a soda would only cost about a dollar 50 or a euro 50 maybe even a little bit less now let's just say okay so typically when we walk the whole thing so forget the foot problems forget the taking the train when we walk the whole thing we stop twice we typically will stop for like a brunch where we'll get something sweet maybe something with that but then the next time we stop is kind of for a later lunch so that's why brian was like it's kind of lunch because typically we stop twice on a 20 to 30 kilometer day one being a meal and one being more of a snack right now our third stop today was at that bar again it was the only option um where it was 
We have three kilometers to go. There's supposed to be another cafe about a kilometer further. And then of course, once we get into Caras de Rey, there'll be lots of options. But at that point, it'll be siesta. And so your options are really just the same drinks, but you're gonna want to meet, we're gonna wanna be in the room showering, wash laundry, all that good stuff. Now at this stop, we had two, uh, we each had a gin and tonic. So two gin and tonic total. Uh, we got another little bowl, as you saw, of the little uh, cocktail mix. And that uh, stop, it was eight fifty for the two drinks. They were four twenty five dollars apiece. Um, and oftentimes at that um, second stop, that lunch stop, we usually are doing that within the last 5K. So we'll get a drink of some sort, a wine, beer, gin and tonic, whatever. But um, we, it's not like it's unusual for us to get a, a drink with, uh, with that in the last 5K. So as of this point, we've spent 13, 20, almost 30 euro uh, today. We also spent, spent a little bit of fun money and we both got these little necklaces uh, that are handmade. Um, the shell goes inside. Um, there's a shell that goes inside and that's what Brian got. So, so we essentially did spend bonus money. We've spent 40 euro so far today, approximately, which leaves us with 20 euro for dinner which means we're probably going to go over budget today because it's, um, it's so we hot. may be able to get pilgrim's meals for 10 euro a piece, but uh, we've kind of gotten out of the habit of eating pilgrim's meals because there haven't been a lot of pilgrim's meal options. No. So, um, and a pilgrim's meal is kind of a habit you have to get into because it's not always the highest quality of food. And uh, when there are other really yummy looking options, Sometimes uh, the pilgrim's meal doesn't look like the best option. Now there are ways to save money. I mean, we could have gone to the um, Super Mercada, the grocery store and gotten um, some snacks to put in our pack. Um, the problem is you don't necessarily want to carry that. It's hard to think about. And it's nice to be in a chair and put your feet up. And, and today we really just needed the ice and the cold yeah. drinks. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't think that would have been a best option for today. And along the route today, we've seen no markets, no. only bars and cafes. We would have had to get it yesterday, but actually the town that we were in, it was Sunday and the supermercado was closed. So we wouldn't have been able to get anything. But those drinks are so important. I mean, well, the cold drinks, not the, the alcoholic drinks. drink. No, just the cold. You need something cold. We were putting ice, you know, on our wrists and trying to cool off. It's important. You got to plan for those hot days. It's unusual, but important to think about. So those are our tips for money. Many people do the Camino spending a lot less money than we spend. And many people do the Camino spending a lot more money than we spend. Yeah. I mean, if you look at people who are walking the last hundred K, they're not on the Camino for very long. So they're spending more money. We're on it for a long time. And the reason for that is because they're often shipping their packs ahead and not carrying packs, so there's that expense. Many of those people who are only walking the last 100K are using a travel agent of some sort to book their rooms. So they're probably not getting quite as good of deals as we're getting by pre-booking months in advance on booking.com. But the thing is, we're trying not to spend too much money. And so it's important, I think, once in a while to just talk about here's what we're spending. We've been watching our budget. We put down in our spreadsheet every day what we're spending. I would say, we had quite a few days from Lisbon to Porto where we are way under budget. We've had many days where we're right on and, and a, some many days, days that we're, that we're over. over. So in a I couple say, weeks, we'll probably post some information about our spreadsheet and about our final budget, just kind of summarizing what we spent. I would guesstimate that we're probably at about 65 average, maybe 70, but I don't want to admit it yet. <laughs> per day for food. Yeah. Our uh, lodging budget is 50 euros a day. And most days we come in right around that, maybe a little bit over, some days a little bit under. You, you've seen in our video, we have some luxuries, but then we have lots of accommodations that are like 35 to 40 euro. Um, many come in right at 50. Um, so it just depends, but I really try to keep the average at 50 so that we can have some luxuries and have some that don't cost quite as much. They're always private rooms, not always a private bathroom, but most of the time a most private bathroom. 
And of course, these are all 2019 prices. So if you're watching this video sometime after that, planning for a Camino in maybe 2020 or later, of course, those prices, I'm sure, are gonna be higher. But this is our experience from being on the Camino Francis in 2017 from St. Jean de Finisterre. And then, of course, as you've been watching this Camino where we did part of the Camino Francis and all the Camino Portuguese. And so our, our take. again, our total budget, lodging and food is 110 euros a day for two people. And I believe in 2017, it was we were, we about, budgeted less, but about, we didn't do as good a job. About 100 a day is I think yeah. what we budgeted, but we were typically a little more over budget. So it hasn't changed much in those two years. No. Uh, but that said, Portugal is um, known for being a little less expensive than Spain. Unless you're on the coastal route from Porto to um, Santiago, that coastal route, was the most expensive time that we had in even when anytime you're in a big city like Lisbon, Porto, it's just gonna cost more money. Coimbra even. Uh... Yeah, but um, it's not quite as bad in the smaller villages. And I think if we would have taken the central route, we would have even spent less money. But we were in some pretty touristy villages um, after Porto. And so that changed things. All right, so just some of our lessons that we wanted to talk about for our experience on the Camino. Look at the Camino right now. And yeah, our view right now is kind of Amazing. spectacular. So, um, well, and don't normally do this in the middle of the day, but here's our Camino right now. The mountain. Thanks for watching another day along our Camino. There'll be more to come as we get closer to Santiago. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so that you don't miss a single post. Bye-bye.